Welcome to this Jeremy Bamber and White House Farm podcast season two. This week we'll hear from Mike O'Brien, who was wrongly convicted of murder and since being exonerated he works as a campaigner helping others who maintain innocence. Here Mike explains how he won the right to access journalists whilst he was in prison and it's what's known as the Sims and O'Brien Law. Access to the media by prisoners was banned in 1995 following a complaint made to the Home Secretary by an MP representing Marie Court, the mother of Helen McCourt, who was murdered in 1988. Mrs McCourt argued that prisoners should not have the privilege of contact with journalists to publicise their cases for monetary gain or to boost their ego or self-esteem. But should that be the same for those prisoners who are maintaining innocence? Many innocent men and women are in prison in the UK fighting not only their justice but the justice of the victim. While an innocent person is convicted, the real killer is free to continue killing others. Jeremy Bamba is amongst the few wrongly convicted prisoners who have campaigns that can represent them. But what about the hundreds of men and women who are fighting their injustice alone? Many have difficulty reading and writing and cannot make substantial claims of innocence in written evidence to the media. They become lost in the system with no means to raise awareness of the injustice they suffer. The Simpson O'Brien complaint in 1999 set out that prisoners have access to the media as it is their human right to have freedom of speech. A ruling was initially passed in their favour, and this ruling was then applied by the Home Secretary. However, the Law Lords overturned the Home Secretary's decision and reinstated the ruling. Lord Steen said that freedom of speech was the lifeblood of democracy, acting as a break on the abuse of power by public officials. This supposedly allowed prisoners to access the media again, including oral access. Jeremy has only been allowed one interview in the past 20 years, and that was a print interview in the Times in 2010. The problem is that print and written media is not as accessible as video interviews. In the 21st century, the digital age requires access which is appropriate to the times. Jeremy has requested a filmed interview at least five times, which has always been refused by the Ministry of Justice. However, there have been a number of filmed interviews with prisoners in Category A prisons who are all guilty and who are discussing their crimes for gratuitous purposes on mainstream TV. There seems to be no logic in this system that gives a voice to the guilty but stifles the voices of the innocent victims of miscarriages of justice. Here's Mike O'Brien on the Simpson O'Brien Law and prisoners' access to the media. The Simpson O'Brien case came about after uh, I was wrongfully imprisoned and I decided to take the Home Secretary to court over uh, banning journalists from visiting prisoners. Um, at the time, Michael Howard decided that uh, prisoners didn't have a right to have oral uh, interviews with uh, journalists and I believe that under Article 10, the right to free speech, that I had every right to. So we took it to the High Court and uh, we won the first round. Uh, then there was a change of government which came in, which was the Labour government, and they appealed against that uh, decision. And unfortunately for prisoners, uh, we lost the case. Uh, it was then a couple of months later that I was released on bail, pending my appeal because of the new evidence, which the journalists had found. And we took it up to the High Court, which is the House of Lords, and the House of Lords reinstated our right that prisoners can have journalists visiting them when they're claiming that they are innocent because of the fact that legal aid is not available and therefore the only way a miscarriage of justice can be uncovered is if a journalist investigated the case and um, investigated it thoroughly with a view to producing new evidence to get it back to the Court of Appeal. The importance of Jeremy Bamba being able to give a live interview or even a pre-recorded interview to do with uh, his prostations of innocence is so important because the, the public will be able to see that he's a real person and not this monster which has been portrayed in some of the tabloid press. And I think this is what the authorities are afraid of, that he's going to get more public backing if they can actually see um, 
Jeremy giving his own interviews, and I think it's very important that uh, O'Brien's and Sims is expanded upon to allow these kind of interviews. Uh, for the, for the simple fact is the public can make their own mind up, and there's always an old saying, you know, if the authorities have got nothing to hide, then why won't they let Jeremy do these interviews? They're obviously afraid of something, and I feel is they're afraid of one thing in particular is that the the public are going to be on his side once they see the new evidence which hasn't been placed before any judge or jury since the since the case happened you know all those years ago i mean it's totally changed the the whole picture of what allegedly happened on that particular night and and and, and shows jeremy uh to be telling the truth all along so i think that's the reasons why but um i think the most important thing is um they should also bring in a lie detector test to to uh, substantiate, uh, you know, claims of innocence because this, the government were using it to keep sex offenders in prison many years ago. So if it's good enough to keep guilty people in prison, it should be good enough to get innocent people out of prison. And I think Jer Jeremy's passed the lie detector test and I think that speaks volumes. If you'd like to join our mailing list for the latest updates on the case as they happen, please email us via our website, www jeremy-bamba.co.uk